recording a live. Hello. Hello, hello, good evening. I see you coming on. Good, good, very good. I see you coming on. More and more coming on. Come, if I, if I, were, if I were in a room, I'd say, come on in, come on co closer. We're going to be getting starting very, very soon. Pray you've had a good weekend. And since you're here early, you can know that we're going to be in Matthew 24, as I promised last time. It's a very interesting passage, and really the way we look at it uh, will be interesting as well. And I will proceed the discussion of the scripture with some comments as we look into this word. So I pray that God has been, well, he has been, he is faithful. So I pray that you have recognized his faithfulness. The Lord really is good. He is keeping us through this time, and I am certainly thankful. Uh, I'm doing well. This is two months into this pandemic in Chicago, and God has been good. I've not been sick not even had a cold, and I thank God. And many of you, God has kept you through all of this, and we just thank God. We're constantly praying for you, praying for our Greater Holy Temple members and the saints of God, and then just everyone. Praise the Lord. God bless you on today. So, getting ready some are joining we're going to hit that 24th chapter of Matthew we know that when we're talking about prophecy sometimes it can can be difficult or bog us down but the word is not here to bog us down or to make us confused or to cause anxiety no the word is really to comfort us and to to empower us, to inform us, to help us. So I'm going to deal deal with this. And I, we have about one minute. When I look over there, I'm looking at the clock so that we can start on time. But God bless you. God bless you right now. We're going to enter in prayer all together praying for, for this time and praying for one another. Greater Holy Temple, love you, all of you who are joining. I may not even have met you, but I love you. Some of you have been a part of Greater Holy Temple. I love you. But look, even as God loves you, I love you. That's who we are in the Lord. Amen. So now we're, we're getting ready to pray right now as we begin our Bible study. So I'm Pastor Lamont Lennox, uh, the pastor of Greater Holy Temple Church of God in Christ in Chicago, Illinois. As you probably well know, you're on that website. Or maybe some friends are, are enabling you through your friendship with them to join us. And we just welcome you. We're so happy. I really am. I'm so happy that you have begun to join us in our Bible study. We're just trying to keep things together, keep ourselves encouraged in the Lord and in the Word as we go forward. Come on, let's look to God. God, we thank you. We thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your keeping, oh God. You've been faithful to us.
You woke us up this morning. You kept us all day. And you have now brought us to this place and to this point where we study your word. And so we say thank you, Lord, even for this time. Thank you, Lord, for being real in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that privilege to call on your name. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do and all that you have done and even all that we're looking to you to do. God, but right now we ask that your presence and your wisdom would be in this time as we study your word. Oh God, let your word fall on fertile ground. Oh God, to in, in develop roots even uh, for our lives, springing up into our lives that we can use it for our every day. We want your word to be a living word. Give us understanding. Open understanding up. Give us a passion for your word. God, I indeed lean on you, depend on you, even as I open my mouth that those who hear me, everyone who hears, will be built up and edified and strengthened and empowered. Oh God, that your purpose would be accomplished right now and that ultimately you would be glorified. I pray and believe in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be focusing on Matthew 24, 24th chapter. And as, as I've been dealing with it for the last few weeks, after Easter week, I wanted to focus on some events that occurred during that Easter week, those last five days. It's, a, it's really, it's amazing to me. The last five days before Jesus went to the cross, that's after he came into Jerusalem and then and then went to the cross. Okay, so there's, there's five days. So he came into Jerusalem, Jerusalem on Sunday. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday night is when we then experience him, him in the garden. And then on Friday, he, he goes to the cross. And yet... There's a tremendous amount of teaching in just those last five days. Those last five days. There's a tremendous amount of teaching that is good for us. There are some things that occur during those five days that we, we focus on. And it's just good for us to kind of know where things are in the Word. But you're probably surprised that certain things occurred in those last five days. Every single morning... Jesus would go to the temple to teach every single morning except on Friday. But he would go and teach in the synagogue. He would teach rather in the temple. So we know that he had opportunity to teach the, those who were around. He had time to te teach and, and to even say some things to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests. Uh, and the other leaders that were around. And he had his special time with his disciples as well. Uh, I think maybe on next week I'll kind, of, I'll kind of review just everything we've covered from those few days. So this today is probably, probably in the Word, it's probably Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, that Jesus is, is teaching teaching his disciples. We talked about the 23rd when talking to the Pharisees and now at the 24th he's talking to his disciples. The 24th chapter of Matthew, his disciples. And so we so we begin 24 and 1. It says and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now I want to stop here. Here. Just this, because this kind of introduces everything that Jesus is going to talk about. And when he leaves the temple, it says that he is shown the stones. Now, if you read in, in the scriptures, Mark 13 
as well as Luke 21. So in all three of these Gospels, there is Jesus talking about what is getting ready to happen. He is very, becoming very explicit. This is, he, this, these are his last few days. And he's getting ready to talk. He's talking about what is getting ready to happen. But he's not talking about or not just talking about what is going to happen in, in the next few days or even in the next few years. But he also talks about what is going to happen at the very end of the earth. Now, the reason I wanted to stop here is because understanding the 24th chapter of Matthew, the 13th chapter of Mark, the 21st chapter of Luke, requires us to make a decision about what we believe. And that is a decision about whether we believe, first, if we believe in the rapture, and then when do we believe that rapture will occur? There are ideas theologically, several ideas theologically about when the rapture will occur or if there actually will be a rapture. There's an idea that says, says that the second coming, it will be, that will be it. The second coming is the rapture. That's when Christ comes. That's it. We're going. That's an idea. As, as theological. Theologians discuss it. Then there's, there's the idea. So that's it's just one event. Then there's the idea that it indeed is two different events. That there is a rapture. And then there is a final coming of Christ. The rapture is when he takes his church. And then the final coming is that final judgment. So there are, there are these two events that occur. But now still comes the question, when does that occur? There are schools of thought that say that the rapture will occur before a period called the tribulation. Some of you've heard of that. This, this is determined even by the, your idea about the thousand years. Lots of things in that. that. If you want to study, you can look and read in the book of Revelation. But there is, a, a, according to a belief that, that there are a thousand years that Jesus will, uh, or Christ will establish his kingdom on earth. And then after that thousand years will, will then be that final judgment. Some believe that that, that second coming will will come and the rapture will come even after that, after that thousand years. I don't want to bog you down with too much. Some believe that the tribulation period that we're talking about will occur, occur after the thousand years. Some believe that the thousand years is happening now. Lots of thoughts. Some believe that the tribulation, or rather that the rapture, will occur before the tribulation. Now, so let me, so let me stop you there. Let me I, take a breath. It's a lot. So, in our church, in the Pentecostal church, we generally believe that the, tri that the rapture will occur before the tribulation period. The tribulation period, which we read about extensively also in the book of Revelation. And that the tribulation is a tribulation that is brought on by God himself to judge the world, to judge unbelievers. If that is so, if we believe that the rapture is, it is called a pre-tribulation rapture. If we believe that the rapture will occur before the tribulation, then this chapter, Matthew 24, occurs after the rapture. What is the rapture? 
It is that event where Jesus Christ comes back in the sky and catches up his church. This is not the end of the world. It is not the end of times. He just takes his church and removes his church from the earth. They are caught up. That's the rapture. Caught up to meet him in the sky. If that is so, then later on, at some point in history, he comes back. And then there is the belief that he comes back after tribulation. So when the church is raptured, then sometime, maybe not immediately after, but sometime after that rapture, the tribulation occurs. And this chapter then would be talking about that period after the church is gone. Which means then that these verses is for us would just be information. But it's nothing that we as a church, those who were ready to meet the Lord in the sky, would actually experience. You got it? That we would not experience these things if the church indeed is raptured before the tribulation. And yet, we have this word and there is something for us to get and use from these scriptures. So, are you with me? I don't I didn't want to put too much on you. It really is a lot of you can do a lot of theological study about that whole thing. And if you read your commentaries, you'll see a lot of different terms premillennial premillennial and uh post tribulation and all of these things. And certainly it's worth study. But let's try to get what we can use now. Okay? Okay, so talking about the stones of the temple. Now, some would say Jesus was talking about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, which indeed the Roman the Romans would destroy the temple in 70 AD. Some believe who study the word and study prophecy that all of this, even the destruction of the temple, had to do with the end times. I'm not going to belabor that. Could be either or. I believe that most scripture, even prophecy, is given to us in layers. That some things have to do with the immediate, the immediate history, things that are going to happen right then and there or in a few years, as well as later on. So, after, after Jesus has said that not one stone shall be be left in the temple, which we know it occurs in 70 AD. But then if we're talking about the end times, he could be also talking about the end times in Israel, which is a whole nother thing. If he's not if he's not talking to the church, then all of this is about Israel. Ah anyway, third third verse. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Now, if we're gone, then this doesn't apply to us. But there's something we can get from this. Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, someone asked me as we're in this pandemic, is this the end? Well, I tell you, if it's according to this, this scripture and if it's the end, I'm pretty sad because I should have been gone. <laughs> <laughs> tribulation, the, the, the rapture should have occurred for me. 
it, it, because I subscribe to that idea that the rapture will occur before the great tribulation, before tribulation. So, so I'm I'm praying not. I'm praying I haven't missed it. I don't believe so. Christ Church is still in the earth. But we are still seeing evidence of these things. Nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows means that that's the beginning of your 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 birth, your your giving birth pains, your, of labor pains. Uh, that means something is getting ready to happen. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So at this point, I believe also that Christ is, is talking twofold then. And he is talking about what his disciples and what the apostles will have to go through. Will have to go through in the beginning of his church. And that they will indeed, the disciples will be persecuted. They will be brought before magistrates. They will be brought before those who are officials. They will be, be uh, uh, they will suffer or even physically. I believe that Jesus was telling, he's talking to his disciples. I believe he was telling his disciples what in their immediate future they were going to have to go through. Again, prophecy in layers. There are many, even now, even in the church, all through the ages of the church, who have also had to suffer persecution. Even now in the world, even if this is not the end, even now in the world, there are many who are in countries where to preach the gospel means utter death to them. It is illegal in certain countries to preach the gospel or preach any other religion other than the state religion or the country's religion. So there again is prophecy being uh, uh, revealed or and, and fulfilled in, in different places in the history of man. Wars and rumors of wars, that pestilence, and all of those things have occurred even in the history of the world. They, they had... Uh, we're talking about this plague, but they, they had a plague before that took out a third of the world population. Huh? And, and then even for this world, world, we know that in 1918, that there was a flu that took out uh, 25 million people. And so we have this pestilence, but there has been pestilence before. There have been wars and rumors of war before. There, I, there is a point that I'm really going to, going to be making with all of this. And, and, and when we have these times, when there are nat a natural uh, disasters and, and, and disasters created by men, and there is kind of fear and there is kind of panic, it is in that atmosphere that false prophets come up. That they point, they even use the word, and they point and say, the word is being fulfilled. Do this, do that, do the other. I believe that Jesus was, was giving us the, the, the word that we should beware, that we should not allow anyone to deceive us. And the only way that we cannot be deceived is through getting in the word for ourselves, seeing what it says reading it and studying it so that false prophets cannot deceive us, take advantage of us, call, tell us to do things for their own gain or because, who knows, maybe sometimes maybe they do believe it, but it's not according to the word. It must be according to the word. Huh? This is important. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. 
and and we're going to be surprised. They're going to deceive many, and because the crowds are believing it, we some will go after the crowds, uh, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It definitely is being preached everywhere. 98% of the world's languages have a Bible translated in their language. 98%. That practicing Christianity right now in this seven, these 7 billion people that are on the planet, there are over 1 billion people who are Christians. Gospels are being preached. All of the major denominations have missionaries in their cities and overseas. The gospel is being preached. Now, is that a sign of the end? He says, he says it's a sign of the end. However, if we're raptured, this is another time. This is not the end. Because God's church is here. It's just something to think about. But, the gospel is being published everywhere. Television, social media. You're watching me right now. The gospel. Just something to think about. So what do we do with this then? If this is not the end, what do we do with this? Well, first of all, we must beware that we do not, we do not get suckered in by false prophets, by those who would take advantage of the church, who, those who would take advantage of fear, those who would take advantage of, uh, of, of panic. We must make sure that no matter what is going on, that we get and stay in that word. And that everything that somebody says, that we check it by the word. The gospel is being published. Let's, let's believe it and trust it. Then it says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Now, if this is scripture that is mostly for Israel, then when it makes references to Israel and to specific places in Israel, we have to believe that, that Christ in his prophecy is making the distinction between the church and Israel itself. That some things are for the church to use because we have the word. But these things are for Israel. Listen. It says, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, is in Israel, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be a great tribulation. We get that term, great tribulation, and great tribulation. This is a great tribulation, and this probably coincides, great tribulation coincides with the sixth chapter of Revelation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Again, I, I believe that one of the great points, whether it is the end time or whether it is right now, we must beware of false prophets, of false Christs, of false preachers, anyone that wants to change the doctrine of the Lord that as we have received it in his holy word, we must beware. How can we beware and be vigilant? Only if we ourselves know this word. Read it, study it. Uh, there should be arise false Christ, false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. That means they will be able to do supernatural things. In so much that if it, were, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Want to want to stop right there at that verse. 
Because by this language, this 16th century language, we have believed, or 17th century language, we believe that this really reads that it's not possible. Because it says, if it were possible, that means if it were possible, but it's not possible. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, but it doesn't mean that. It means that they will try to fool the very elect. It doesn't mean that you won't be fooled, that the very elect won't be fooled. It means that they will make attempts to even fool the very elect. And if the very elect of the Lord uh, are not vigilant and not standing strong in his word, I'm telling you right now, you can be fooled. Others, saints of God, loving the Lord, have been fooled. And the only way we can keep from being fooled is to be, is to be ready. This is what I'm taking from this. That I'm not going to let any charlatan, I'm not going to let any false Christ, any false prophet fool me. I don't care what signs you show me. If you don't stay in this word, I'm not listening. And I'm not going to just think that you can't fool me. I'm going to study and be vigilant because I know someone will try to fool me. And if I don't have the word, you will fool me. That he that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. You, just, you make yourself ready. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go on. This is a, a big takeaway. We must beware. Must beware of false prophets. Must beware of, of false Christs. Even if they show you miracles, are they still, are you still staying in the word? Yeah? I, you can't show me wonders. Don't show me miracles. Don't tell me what I had for breakfast. Don't tell me what I wore yesterday. No, no, no. That's fine. And all, but really, you got to stay in the word. If you deviate from this word, I don't care what miracles you do. Even if you pull money out of the hat. I know we like that. But even if you pull money out of the hat. If you don't stay in this word, I cannot cannot receive it. I cannot receive what you, what, who you are, what you, what you're saying you are. No, it must be the word. For as in the now, now here comes the Christ coming. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sun, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now look then. If what we say is so. If we have already been raptured. And this is a prophecy of the tribulation. That means then that this passage of scripture is not talking about the rapture. You have to make a choice. This passage of scripture then must be talking about Jesus' final second coming to the earth to judge. If that is so, then this, what, this part that we're reading here in the 24th chapter of Matthew when Jesus comes back in this passage, if the church has already been raptured, then when Christ comes back, he's coming back with his church. We'll already be with him. He's coming back with his church. This will be the end of all things. This will be the end. This will be the judgment. And, and who has been there? Israel, the unbelievers, the, those who will be judged. 
and then this end, and he shall send his angels with a great, great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. This He's just saying here that when you see signs, that means it's happening. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, the generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Then he says, he gives you a, a, a look at how the world is going to be. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No man knows it. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Again, many times we've seen this as the rapture. But if the church has already been raptured, this is not on the rapture. The church has already been gone. This is the tribulation. If we don't experience the tribulation, then the church is gone already. And this is part of the second coming. When the Lord finally judges the earth. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and he would not have suffered this house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, the Son of Man cometh. Now, as I, as I told you, there are various schools of thought. I, I, I put this forward, and really the school of thought that, that our church teaches, really, we believe, if I'm not mistaken, that, that the church of God is raptured before the tribulation. There are other churches that believe that the church experiences part of the tribulation there is a in revelation there's a seven year period three and a half years the church is there and then raptured but we don't really have the indication of that and then the great tribulation which will be the other three and a half years as you study if you look in revelation that would be the great tribulation the church will be gone whatever your belief the big lesson, the big takeaway is this. Be ready. Be ready. Because what, whether, whether the church, it's time for the church to go or not, whether, whether it's the time for the church to be raptured or not, you, we, I, am only going to be on the planet so long. One day, God is going to call me. One day, he's going to call you. I'm of a particular age. I only have so many years on the planet. So really, my rapture is going to come, whether it's the end of the earth or not. It's going to be the time when the Lord calls me home. So he says, we don't know. And we don't know when we're going to die. When we're going to, we don't know any of that. Be ready. And I think that that is our big takeaway. That... That as we're living our life, we should live our life as if, as if Jesus is coming back tomorrow. We should live our lives wanting to be ready, wanting to do the will of God, wanting to, to grow in Him, wanting to be better than what we are. We want Him, uh, than what we are now. We want Him to find us doing those good things that He wants us to be doing. We want Him to say, well done. 
whenever that is. We then should be watchful and be and make ourselves ready. So really, it doesn't matter in the end. It doesn't matter whether whether Jesus is coming tomorrow or in a thousand years. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live as if he's coming soon. If I'm living like that, then every single day I want to get closer. Every single day I want want to ask him that he, he be glorified in my life. That's what I want every single day I'm going to say, Lord, show me your will. Show me your way. Teach me. Teach me how to walk. <laughs> because I'm not going to spend my time looking up in the sky, waiting, waiting to see, are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? No, I want to live the life that is pleasing to you so that whenever you come, Whenever you call my name, whenever you call, that I will be ready. And that is our big takeaway, even from this 24th chapter. And be, be prepared, be, be knowledgeable, beware of those who are, who are false preachers and false teachers and false Christ. And, and let us be ready. Now, when we get into the 24th, 5th chapter, there's more on things we should be doing. For, for the Lord and as we are living out this life. And so we, that's one of the things he taught. But look, let's just be ready. Uh, I want to close with this. I was reminded that many, many, many years ago, and some might remember this, in the, in the 70s, that's a long time ago, I wrote a, a musical called Jubilation. And in Jubilation, after they kind of Ooh, the singing jubilations, coming a day of great jubilation, hallelujah. Then they stop and they, and they freeze. And they're looking up in the sky. And an unbeliever passes by while they're frozen, looking up in the sky. And he, be, he looks at them for a while. And then he sings the song, Why are they gazing at the stars? What are they looking for? I thought about that song. It's kind of like we can't spend our time gazing at the stars. We can't spend our time gazing at the sky, waiting, standing still and not working and not growing and just, just looking. Is he coming? Is he coming now? No, what we should be doing. What we should be doing is living our life in a way that glorifies God and shows the love, his love, even to others. We don't have time to be look, just looking at the stars. We don't have time to just be gazing. Is he coming now? Is he coming now? We just live our life as if the Lord is coming soon. And that when he does come, he will find us doing what he has told us to do. That is the lesson, really from the 24th chapter for us regardless of whether whether we believe we're going to be here or not here during the tribulation I just want to be doing what God wants me to do then I won't have anything to worry about either way amen hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah now look you can there's a lot of study on in on revelation on end times and on uh, eschatological that means things of the end, the end time things, uh, eschatological study, and you can do that by all means. But, but don't let it sidetrack you and make you miss, miss living this life the way God wants you to live it. That's the most important thing. Do we live a life that glorifies him? Do we show love to others? Do we, do we share his gospel? A a amen. That, that is the most important thing. If we do that, we're going to be perfectly fine when the Lord comes back again. Well, I'm ended, ended this study. God bless you. Uh, we know we're going to see you on Friday at 6.30 where we'll have prayer. And on Sunday, this Sunday, uh, I will do, the, do our broadcast from the church. And then at 12.30, I will go into the parking lot. So I don't want, to, want you to come into the church. I'm just going to do the broadcast just like I do it now. But at 12.30, I'm going to go into the parking lot and uh, position myself probably around the, our big tree. We have a big tree, tree and a platform out there. 
And uh, then anybody that wants to come by and wave at me and say happy birthday, you can do that. We're going to do social distancing. We're going to do right. Uh, and you can drive by. You can roll your window down and wave. And, and I'm going to do that to you. But this will give me an opportunity because I haven't seen you in so long to see you. It will also give us all an opportunity to see one another. So you, you can come drive around the parking lot and go out and you know, that kind of thing. It will be, be wonderful. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because, as I said, I haven't seen you in a long time. Okay, so that's on Sunday, 1230, in the parking lot of the church. God bless you. Let's, let's have this final prayer. I know things are happening each and every day. We're just believing God for you. So you can't tell me what your request is, but I know that God understands. God hears it. And so I'm praying, and we're all praying for one another. And for whatever that need is, whatever that the petition you have before the Lord, even as we get ready to end, let's look to the Lord all together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you because you are the God that we can go to. You have invited us to your throne to, to get find mercy and grace to help us even in the time of trouble. So, Lord, we come before you and lay our petitions before you. Some of our petitions are petitions for our own healing and deliverance. Some of our petitions are for the healing and deliverance of those, that, those we love, that our family members or our co-workers or our friends or our neighbors of God. And so we're just asking your as you as we pray before you that you will hear your people hear our cry and answer have mercy O god even as we pray in jesus name that you would heal and deliver that you would grant our request right now even as we pray according to your will we believe you we believe your word we believe your power oh god you are the god that can do anything we thank you for your love for your mercy to all of us. Oh God, we thank you for granting our request. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're asking, oh God, that as we depart, even from this forum, that you will cover us, allow us to abide under the protective shadow of your wing. We are trusting you right now to keep us in the safest place we know. It's in the very hollow of your hand until we gather again to worship, praise, magnify your name, Enjoy this sweet fellowship one with the other. For right now we give you honor. Right now we give you glory. And right now we give you that final praise. Come on, give the Lord a final praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Peace be unto you. Peace be to the saints. Praise his holy name. And remember, I love you. I love you. I love you. Have a wonderful evening. God bless.